be dedicating the shiur uh, for refuah shalema of Bela Batchana. She have a surgery today. Bezat Hashem, the surgery will succeed. Uh, and uh, also refuah shalema of Ora Devora Bat Rivka and Leilu Nishmat Devora Fege Bat Shmuel. You know how small we are. How how we don't understand things that are happening in the world. That when when even the Torah is telling us certain, certain stories and we have questions, it's just because we don't have any idea what, what's behind the scenes. I got to tell you, so a beautiful Hidush. Uh, you remember the story with, uh, um, uh, what's his name? Um, Yaakov and Esav and Rivka. You remember the whole story that uh, Rivka was pregnant and she didn't know if uh, what's going on with the baby, he wants to go to this way, he wants to go to that way, right? Wants to go to Shul, wants to go to uh, Avodah Zarah place. And at the end, they told her, no, you have two kids. So she said, oh, if I have two kids, so it's okay. And then when they, when they were born, Yaakov was holding the, how you call it? The Akiv. The, the uncle, the uncle of, of ankle, of, uh, of Esav, and also at the end of the story, Rivka is telling to Yaakov to cheat up, right? It's Hag saying that he is Esav and to get the Berachot. And there is many questions coming up. First of all, I don't understand. Tell me something, Rivka. You worry about uh, one baby that one time wants to go to a shul, and the other time wants to go to a church, right, or whatever it is. And when they're telling you, no, you have two kids, so she's saying, oh, if I have two kids, I'm fine. What do you mean you're fine? You're having a son that is going to go to Abu Dazara. What, what do you mean you're fine? Right? And then, why Rivka have to cheat up Yitzhak? Can you, uh, you cannot go straight up to Yitzhak and tell him, listen, Yitzhak, I want you to give Beracha to Yaakov and to Esav. Right? Rabotai, who is the boss in the house? Who is the boss? Who is the boss in the house? Besides Hashem. <laughs> Besides Hashem, you have your wife. Whatever your wife is telling you, you got to have follower, right? So Rivka, why she didn't went straight up to Yitzchak? And she told him, listen, Yitzchak, I want you to bless Yaakov and not Esav. Rabotai, again, we have no idea what's going behind the scenes. Say the Rabbi Chaim Vital, the student of the Arizal. He writes that Rivka and her son Yaakov were Gilgul of Adam and Chava. Chava, she became a Gilgul, uh, Rivka, she became the Gilgul of Chava, and Yaakov became the Gilgul of Adam and Rishon. Asav writes the Marhu, Rabbi Chaim Vital, that he was the Gilgul of the Nahash, of the snake. And he explained that what was the sin of the snake? What he did? He cheated up Right? Chava and Adam. He cheated them up saying, no, nothing is going to happen to you. And what he, what he did, once Adam and Chava ate from the fruit, writes the Torah, that from that moment and on, the Tov and the Ra, the good and the evil, got mixed inside the person. Until then, Adam and Chava were good. The evil was outside them. Every, everything was clear. This is good and this is not good. At the moment that they ate from the fruit, the good and the evil got mixed together. And now, how many times we want to do something and we're doubting, is that good or not good? Is that Yetzirah Tov talking or is that Yetzirah Ra talking, right? Why is this happening? Because we have the good and the bad mixed up. Say the Marhu. When Rivka got pregnant, she knew that she's coming here to this world to, to, to try to fix a little bit the sin of Hava. When she got pregnant, she felt that the kid is going to the shul, and she felt that the kid is going also to Avodah Zarah. Rabotai. She understood what's going on. I thought that I'm coming to arrange this scene and to separate the good and the bad. And look what's going on inside me. I have one kid going to good and to bad. That means that I cannot fix it. That one more time I have the good and the bad mixed. When she went, when she went to the prophet 
to ask from him what's going on. The Prophet tells her, don't worry, you have two goyim bebitnech. You're going you're gonna to have two powers. You have the good in one side and you have the bad in the other side. Who was the one? Who was Asaf? Asaf was the Gilgul of the Nahash. And writes Chachamim, you know why? Rivka had to tell Yaakov. Why Rivka had to tell Yaakov to cheat? Because the same way that the Nahash cheat up Adam and Hava, how, how he said, the Nahash, Aya Arum Mikol Hayat What's Arum? It was uh, tricky from all the animals. Say the same way that the Nahash used his strictness to make Adam and Hava fall, now we have to use strictness to fall up, to, make, to, to, to put down the Nahash himself that was Asav. And that's why Yaakov was holding the Akev. Yaakov was holding the, the uncle, the heel of, of, of Asav. You know why? Because the Pasuk writes, after Adam and Hava made the sin, God put a kelala, God put a, a, a curse in between the human being and the snake. And he says, the human being, he will hate you in the head. That means that Adam, the human being, is going to heat up the head of the snake. And the snake is going to try to heat up the heel of Adam. Meaning the same way that the snake is attacking the heel, Yaakov to be able to be metaken, the sin of the Nahash, was, of Adam, I'm sorry, he had to hold up this same heel of, of the Nahash. Rabotai, what are we learning from here? One thing basic. We have to understand that we have no idea what's going on in our life. You see something and you have no idea what are the, the 10 steps before that that are behind this vision that, you, that you're seeing. But let me tell you one more point. And this is very, very important. Chachamim are saying that every single action that a person does, he do it for, to himself. What that means to himself? He says, whatever you do, you think that right now, oh, I did this, I lost, I did that, Chaval, I did it. You have no idea that all the actions that you're doing, basically behind the scenes, are coming only for your own profit. By the way, if we spoke about our forefathers, to, we said by Yitzhak and uh, we said by Yaakov and Rachel. We all know the famous story that Rachel wanted to get married to Yaakov and Levat cheated, right? And, see, and, and he changed and he put Leah instead of Rachel. Say the Arizal. Amazing. He says, why Akados Baruch Hu had to put Rahel in such a situation? It's hard. Imagine. Imagine her for a moment. She's standing over there and she knows that that's it. She's going to get married. Uh, uh, Yaakov is going to get married to, to Leah. And that's it. He's not going to get married to her. She didn't have thought about it even. Right? Say Chachamim. Rahel was Akara. Rachel wasn't able to have children at all. She had no chance at all to get, uh, to, uh, to get pregnant. What make her the huge miracle to get pregnant twice? Say the Pasuk. HaKadosh Baruch Hu remember Rachel. I have a question. Can you tell me, well, can you tell me what HaKadosh Baruch Hu remembers? What? Borei Olam forgot about Rachel and now he said, oh, Oh, what about this girl? You know what? Hazit, let's give her a child. What do you mean that Akadosh Baruch Hu remembers? Borei Olam say Rashi. He remembers what Rachel did to Leah when she gave her the simanim. And in the merit of this simanim that she gave her, Borei Olam pay her back to give her also ch uh, children to Rachel. You understand? At the end of the day, Rabotai, we think that we're losing something because of our actions, but we have no idea what's behind the scenes. All what a person does, he does it to himself for good and bad minah for bad as well. You're acting correctly, you're going to get paid correctly. Bad minah, you were doing the opposite. Lo alenu velo alechem. let me tell you a beautiful mashal, famous mashal that Chachamim are saying to understand this concept. There was this king that he had his only daughter. 
beautiful daughter, very smart. Everybody wanted her. But you know what? More famous you are, everybody wants you. And uh, it was hard to get about the, the great boy. Everybody wanted to. So the king decided to make a type of test. What was the test? He says, Rabotai, he took a whole bunch of people that were interested. And he said, listen, I'm going to build up a huge, huge building. And I want you to go up to the building. Whoever will get to the high, to the last level of the building, my daughter is already sitting there waiting for you. Habibi, you will take her. Everybody, of course, they were, you know, preparing themselves, making push-ups, you know, running, making, uh, 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 you know, preparing themselves. The great day came. And there is a whole bunch of, I don't know, a hundred guys planning to get to the top, to the top floor. We're talking about over 100 floors. Yeah, it's a hard, you know, not easy. Fine. The Butai. The, the, how do you call that? The, the Taharut. How do you say Taharut in English? The, the competition started. And, you know, at the second that the competition starts, all the 100 boys started to run inside that, that uh, building. And they're running and running and they're going five floors, 10 floors. They get into the 20. They get, and they get into the 35. You know, and the guys are still strong. They're getting into the 40. And you know, you start to have, you start to see people that are, you know, having a hard time to breathe already. 40th floor without stopping. It's not easy. You know, the guys are, and they're going a little bit more, you know, they reach the 43, the 45. And some guys already started to say, you know what, this is not for me. You know, I'm, I'm not going to die for this girl. You know, Baruch Hashem, there are many girls in this world. Yala, you turn, and they're going down. Fine. Of a whole bunch of people that are leaving. And then, there is still, uh, you know, at least more than, uh, more than half that are continuing going up. And they're going up, you know, to the 50, to the 55 and 60. When they get into the 60, Rabotai, Mamash, that's it. It's too hard. For the, more, most of them, it's already too much. Too much. Now, you know, there is a, there is a concept that a, when a person wants to go down, he feels bad to go down by himself. Right? When, I, when, I, when you want to reach something and you see that you cannot reach it, you try to convince your friend that next to you, yeah, come with me to the other place. You know, you, you have been into a diet. I don't know if you have been into a diet. Especially if you do it with someone else. And you're saying, guys, let's, let's go for it. You know, me and you, we're going to make the real diet. And you start with your friend. And all of a sudden you see that you cannot handle. What are you going to do? What's the first way, you know, to protect yourself? You start to tell to your friend, listen... I don't think it's for us, right? I don't think uh, we, uh, uh, me and you can do it. Why, why are you including your friend? Let him alone. No, the Yitzhak have to show that, you know what? If I'm falling, I have to fall with someone else. And unfortunately, that's a Yitzhak But the Rabotai, let's continue with the Mashal. And the Mashal goes, that the more going up and up, less people are, are being there. You have the four last people. They're getting into the floor 70. Very high. They're exhausted. They're sweating. They're exhausted. And these four people, they're starting to go up. One more floor, two more floors. Two of them, they said to their friends, you know what, guys, we're leaving. Now tell me something. If you're in a competition and you want to get to somewhere, are you going to push and convince your friends, Yalla, come with me? Are you going to say, Yalla, get out of here quick, you know? I want to get the, 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 the big prize. Unfortunately, also that's another type of Yetzirah. When you see your fellow falling, yeah, but you want a competition, you want to reach to the great, great prize, you're letting him fall. You're not even uh, helping him out. But the Rabotai, there is two last guys. And these two guys, last guys are going up, and they're going up, and they're reaching to the 80th floor. And then when they get to the 80th floor, one of them said, listen, till here. 20 more floors, impossible for me. And his friend is telling him, listen, you got it to the 80. What's going on with you? Another 20. 
I can't, I can't, I'm about to die. I'm, I'm telling you, I know myself. I feel my, I can't go, nothing. Not even one more floor, nothing. You try to convince him, nothing is going on, and these friends fall down. Rabotai, there is only one more guy. And the mashals end up that this guy decided to go one more floor, and that extra one floor, the 81, he opens up, there is a door, and in that door, there is an elevator going straight up to the 100. What is this mashal? Chachamim are teaching us from this mashal we can learn three main points in Abu Hashem. Number one, like we said at the beginning, if you started something and you feel that you cannot go for it, it's too hard for you, don't try to push others to do something that, that uh, uh, you know, that right now you're falling. Don't try to push someone else together with you to fall. If you cannot stand it, go, go for it by, uh, by yourself. Don't try to push someone else. That's number one. Number two, when you see someone else falling, instead of saying, you know what, yes, I'm going to, you know, finally my, my competition in, the, in, in business is not going so well. Yeah, good for him. I, I, at least I will make some money. All this, no one can take you even one penny in your life. Like the Gemara writes, that even Malchut, even kingdom, one Malchut, one kingdom cannot touch another kingdom even as a string of a hair. Nothing. You cannot even take a little bit of whatever belongs to someone else. Also the same thing with Parnasa. What do you think? That because the guy next to you opened the same store as you, he's going to take from you the Parnasa. Whatever is going to happen to you will happen with him or without him. And the third point, Rabotai. And this point is very important. What was the most hard moment of the guy that reached to the 100th floor? In which floor was the most hard for him? You know which floor? The 80. You know why the 80? Because in the 80, he finds himself alone. No one is going to help him. And you have another 20 and you have no clue that there is an elevator in the next floor. They have no idea. And it's becoming extremely hard. Say, Chachamim, each one of us in our life, we have moments that we feel, halas. I'm done. This is too much. Too hard. Say, Chachamim, wait. Understand that the, behind the scenes, Borei Olam is giving you this elevator. Do one more step up. Don't give up because the next step, there is the elevator waiting for you that is going to lift you up. You know, how many times the Yetzirah, and that's how the Chovat Ravavot writes, Yetzirah is attacking us in many, many ways. One of the most strong ways that he has is to put us in, in a, it's called in Hebrew, Dikaon. Dikaon is a, how to say the Dikaon in English? Huh? <laughs> depression. What is the depression? You made up something bad, and the Yetzirah is telling you, ah, you see, Sammy? I told you you can't. Ah, forget about it. You know, the, yesterday someone sent me a, 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 a video of a guy in Israel, young guy, 22 years old, in a yeshiva, making siyum shas, finishing the whole entire shas for the fourth time. Fourth time at the age of 22. Now, I want to tell you something. I was watching the video. And I don't see the guy. I see all the people around him. And I'm trying to think, what are they thinking at that moment? I'm going to tell them what are they thinking. You have the group of guys that are saying, you know what? If he did it, we're going to do it. <laughs> and I'm signing for you. That 80, 90, 95, 99% of those guys, I'm not going to get even to half of the shots. Why not? Yeah, they come with all the power. But uh, what, what do you think? Finishing a shaz is easy? It's not easy. And you have the Yitzhara pull, you know, hitting and hitting and hitting. And all of a sudden, the Yitzhara is telling you, come on. Sami, I told you that you cannot do it. Forget about it. It's only for great guys. Only for these uh, weird type of guys that are able to finish four times the shaz. Not for us. Rabotai, this example applies to each one of us in everything. Any avodat Hashem. You want to wake up earlier. You want to fix up time of learning Torah. You want to be more straight in your business. You want to be a better husband with your wife. And you say to yourself, that's it. 
from now on I'm going to treat my wife better and I'm going to, uh, you know, talk to her much uh, sweeter and everything. And Borei Olam is making you a test. The Yetzirah is pushing, is pushing you to get angry and then you're falling. And what's the reaction after falling? What's the reaction? Say the Chobat Revavot, you're standing in front of a very hard test right now. After you fall, if you're going to hear the Yetzirah telling you, you see, it's impossible for you, or you're going to hear the Yetzirah Tov telling you, okay, Sheva Yipol Tzadik Vekam. Seven times the Tzadik can fall. Doesn't matter how many times you fall, but you know what's making you Tzadik? That you have the power to stand up again and to grow more. Baruch Adonai Le'olam. Amen ve'amen.